Hi, I'd like to show you how to calculate the change in entropy delta S for a reaction using standard entropies. Um, now, you're going to get the standard entropies from a table, and I want to show you an example of a table. This is just the back of one of my textbooks right here. You can see all of these tables. See right there where it says S? That is going to be um, your entropy, your standard entropy table. Um, now, a couple of things to point out here. See that little knot that we have up here? That means that we're at standard thermodynamic conditions. So just to remind you, remind you that word standard is referring to standard conditions, and for thermodynamics, that's one ATM at 25 degrees C. So all of the values in this table were taken at one ATM and 25 degrees C. Um, this is very similar to heat of formation where we can find delta H and delta G using the sum of products minus the sum of reactants. So same principle. Um, be really, really careful to multiply by the number of moles. Um, so notice up here where I wrote that N, that is indicating number of moles. Um, so common mistake, just showing you what I see students, you know, the mistakes that students make is that they'll forget to multiply by the number of moles. And I'll show you in the example how to do that. Um, also watch the units. When you look at a table, this one that I showed you, it gives delta G, delta H, and S. Well, delta G and delta H are in kilojoules per mole, whereas um, our, our S is in joules per Kelvin times mole. So be really careful, it's in joules not kilojoules. And that's going to become really important when you have to use these tables to do Gibbs free energy. So just want to point that out, be aware of the unit. You might have a thermodynamic table and S, the entropy, standard entropy, is the unit different from everything else. Um, watch, so be careful, watch your units, be careful to multiply by the moles right there, sorry. Um, another contrast, elements have an entropy value. Now why this is significant is that both delta H and delta G, if you have an element, they don't have a heat of formation or an energy of formation because elements are formed in the stars. However, elements on Earth, they definitely have an entropy because there's energy inside of them. Um, so I wanted to pull out an example here. I want you to look right down here at oxygen. I'm hoping you can see that there's oxygen. Notice it's zero for delta H, zero for delta G, but in the middle, there's a number. Um, so just be careful on that. Sometimes students, um, they'll be thinking, oh yeah, delta H, delta G, um, my S value, and they go, oh yeah, do you know what? Don't worry about elements, they're always zero. Well, they're always zero for delta G and delta H, but not for S. So I just don't want you to get those mixed up. Um, and then be careful always when you're reading these thermodynamic tables, watch phases, because a different phase, even if it's the same compound, a different phase will have a different value. And that's true of delta G, delta H, and our S. Um, okay, so here is our formula, Lipson's formula, to find the change in entropy for a reaction, that's what that subscript R stands for, and we're at standard conditions, remember 25 degrees C, 1 ATM. Um, this mass symbol, sigma, is the sum, is going to be the summation of the moles times the standard entropy for reactants, minus the sum of the moles times the standard entropy of the products. So it's always reactants minus products. There are um, very few cases in chemistry where we don't do final products minus initial, um, or excuse me, oh, products minus reactants. So sorry, you guys. Let's change that right now. <laughs> it's always products minus reactants. Minus reactants. I did grade 180 FRQs last night. Maybe that's why I made that mistake. Um, okay, so products minus reactants. All right, now, best way to do this always is just to show you an example, and I'm sure that you'll understand all of this, be able to put all this together with the example. So we are going to take um, an ethanol. It's a gas, react it with three moles of oxygen, just a combustion reaction, and it's going to produce two moles of CO2 and three moles of H2O. So I went to my table right here, okay? You can Google this. Um, you can uh, look in a, a textbook, a reference book. We have lots and lots of tables of thermodynamic values. Look up the standard entropies, okay? So I looked in my table and I was really careful. Ethanol, it had a value for both gas and liquid. So I was sure to find the gas is 282.7 kilojoules, or excuse me, joules, divided by Kelvin times mole. Sorry, I left off one unit there, times mole. 
Okay, so, and that's the unit for all of these from the table. Um, oxygen gas, again, I was really careful to find the gas, 205.07, gas of carbon dioxide, 213.74, and then the gas form had to be really careful, was 188.84. Okay, I'm going to write this symbolically, just so you can see it very explicitly, and then we'll go and we'll plug in numbers. Um, once you get used to this, you don't have to write it symbolically every time, um, but you definitely want to write it out so that a professor could at least see the numbers, that they could follow how you put the numbers in. Um, to show you to begin, though, just so that we're not skipping any steps, I'm going to write it out symbolically. So we're going to have the change in entropy for the reaction is going to equal, I put big brackets because we have to do the sum of the products. We are going to have two moles of the CO2 times the entropy for CO2, all right? So I'm looking at the entropy for CO2 and I've got to multiply that by two moles. Plus, we're going to add the other product because this is a sum, the summation. Um, we're going to have three moles of water um, times the entropy of water. Okay, so there's the sum of all of my products, the entropy of all the products, minus the reactants right here. So my first reactant, I've got one mole times the entropy of my ethanol, plus, all right, I'm doing sum, so I've got to add the other reactant, three moles times the entropy of the oxygen. Nice. So there you can see it that we've got our products, and I was really careful to include the moles, minus my reactants, and I was really careful to include those moles. So let's go ahead and plug in numbers. Again, if you want to write it out symbolically, you can, but once you get used to this, that step you could skip. Okay, so change in entropy for a reaction equals, let's go ahead and substitute in numbers. We're going to have, again, our two moles of CO2, entropy of CO2, which was 213.74 plus three moles times the entropy of water in the gas phase, um, 188.84. So that's gonna be my sum of entropy for products minus, now here's gonna be the sum for the entropy of reactants. We have one times um, the entropy of ethanol, 282.70 plus three moles times the entropy of oxygen, which was 205.07. Okay, now we just need to do some easy calculations. Uh, let me write out a couple of steps here for you. When we take the two times um, our, let's see, 213, we're going to get 427, 48, go ahead and see, I'll be with you in just a second, plus 566.52, Minus, we'll have the 994, uh, oh, excuse me, 200, right there, 282.70 plus 615.21. Go ahead and do a little bit uh, more math, and we'll end up with 994 minus 897.91, and that will equal, whew, we got it, 96.09. That is our entropy. Now remember the unit on that is joules per Kelvin times mole. So that's for this overall reaction right up there. It shows us the entropy. Notice a sign on it, it's positive. So what does a positive delta H tell us? It is going from order to disorder. It tells us it's spontaneous and anything that's um, spontaneous in entropy is going from order to disorder. Let's check that if I were to predict this. Notice I have all gas phases, so I can't look at phases. So now I'm going to look at the number of moles. I've got one, two, three, so four moles here. Over here, I've got two plus three, five moles. Going from four moles to five moles, that's from order to disorder, which the entropy would be spontaneous, positive, right there. Okay, good. So there we have it, standard entropies. You just have to have a table. Use this formula, you'll be good to go. Have a nice day and good work, thanks.